Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm going to call the name of some communities in St. James and I just want you to tell me what comes to your mind. For those who are familiar with Jamaica, just tell me. All right, Flankers, Glendavon, Norwood, Canterbury, Salt Spring, and Albion. All right, these are areas that are all in St. James, in the Montego Bay area and just on the outskirt. All are in the constituency of St. James Northwestern. That is the epicenter of all of that. Now, what will ring the bell with all of these is that these are places where the most bloodletting go, goes on, the concentrated series of bloodlettings that puts about 20% of the nation's total crime figures happens right in uh, about a 12-mile circumference. Yes. So what we're looking at, and all of this is in one constituency, Northwestern St. James. This is the cons constituency of Dr. Horace Chang. And coincidentally, Norwood is also was also the headquarters of the Stone Crusher Gang. Yes, that was right there in Norwood. Then there is a small community there in St. James also that is called Granville. Now, Granville does not have a lot of local gunmen, but it is one of the most murderous um, little um, communities in St. James. Most of the gunmen that reside there now actually come from outside the community. In, in whose constituency is Granville? One guess. That person is no other than our National Security Minister, Horace Chang. Now, Horace Chang beat um, Francis Tolo in the um, O2 elections to take over that constituency. Now he was placed in there 18, about roughly 18 months before, or could could be a little less, because my estimate, based on what I'm hearing, between 14 and 18 months, he had been there and trying to um, win the con constituency. And in that space of time, before the O2 election, leading up to the O2 election, seven of the PNP's top um, workers on the ground and organizers for that party were killed. There were five men and two women. Now, this was all placed down as being up to gang violence because before that, there was a lot of violence. It, it wasn't caused by the political parties. There was a lot of gang violence because most of the gangs were not aligned to any particular political party. They were just fighting over turf. So at the time, coincidentally, seven of the stalwart PNP workers on the ground were killed over a series of months, right? And somehow the PNP just couldn't get their act together and organize as as good as they had wanted and they lost the election on the fact is that the pnp uh would still have lost either way because after pj Patterson's um wrecking of the economy it is believed that the jlp was in the ascendancy and was heading up 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 and the pnp was on the way down in terms of popularity so chances are they would have won. The JLP would have won even if those seven persons had not died. Now, the gang that was said to have done most of those killings was the Stone Crusher gang. And inadvertently or deliberately, this helped the JLP to win that seat. Now, Horace Chang, after winning the 02 election, 
He was subsequently elected in 07 and again in 2011 and again in 2016 and again in 2020. That is five consecutive times. Now, this has never happened in this constituency in its entire history since its inception in 1944. If anything, the PNP had won it most of the times, but the most consecutive times they had won it was three. And in that time, the PNP had had three consecutive terms of three separate occasions. Let's look at this chart. As you can see, the JLP first won that seat in 1944 when that seat when, when that constituency was created. JLP won it once. Then the PNP won it three consecutive times. And then the the, the JLP won it once again. Then the PNP came back and took it three consecutive times. Then in 1980, when the JLP had the landslide, they took it once again. JLP took it once again. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there was no 1983 election. The election was called and the PNP did not contest. So there was no election. So as far as I'm concerned, 1980 election was the election. 83 was no election. But so as far as I'm concerned, when they won in 1980, it was once. 83 was no election, right? So they won it once in 44, once in 62, once in 80. So, and each in, in between all those one, one time wins, the PNP took it three consecutive wine, times. So see, after 1983, the PNP came back and took it three more times. Times. Every time the PNP take it, they do three consecutive terms. But look, after 1997 election, the PNP won it, the JLP won it in 02 with Horace Strong. Look what happened. 02, they won. They, see, they held it five consecutive times. This is unprecedented. How could they do that? How could they do that? I don't think anybody has ever stop to really analyze what had gone on here but things have happened you know and what we have we need to look at the way crime and murders had evolved in the time when the jlp took it over right now let's look at some of what was happening at the time some of the most bloodiest and most notorious gunmen were at work there. And most of the gangs there were small gangs and they were properly funded. God knows by who. Some by drug money, some by a lot of scamming money, and some by other means. But let's take the Stone Crusher gang because the Stone Crusher gang was by far the largest, most powerful and most influential, quote-unquote influential, and the most feared, and they have more duplicates to their name than any uh, of the other gangs. Now, Eldon Calvert, let's look at him. He had a million-dollar bounty on his head. He was Jamaica's most wanted, most wanted, and linked to 16 murders, committed just between 03 and 06. And as far as I'm concerned, the 16 murders that he was wanted for, was only those that were known that he was fully connected to, that are that the police have reasons to believe he was connected to. But the amount of people that Eldon Calvert killed is believed to at least twice that. So in other words, he might have killed at least maybe 30 or more persons. Our next man is Michael Forbes. Now, Michael Forbes was killed, you know. After committing, after killing five people one night on the 7th of February, I think on the 6th of February, they went back and killed him the following night in um, Huddersfield in Orakabesa. Now, he was wanted for 14 murders, including the blood lane triple murder, plus another five persons again that were killed. You know, these five persons were um, 43 year old 
Patrick Anderson, 29-year-old Natalie Ferguson, 57-year-old Linda McCallum, 62-year-old Michael Montague, and his 27-year-old son Michael Montague Jr. You know, and he was killed. This man, Michael Forbes, he was killed in Huddersfield, Arakabesa, the following day. Now, let me tell about Huddersfield where he was killed. Huddersfield is a gated community. It a new, was a new community at the time, uh, just being built, and the houses were expensive and were built for business people and professionals. The flats there were, were not cheap. Now, the house in which the police found him and dirt him was actually um, owned. It is reputed that the house was owned by a JLP councillor. Now, I don't know that for a fact. I've heard it and I've gotten a name. But before I do that, I'm, I'll be checking, making some checks at the government offices, the land office and so on, to confirm. Because I want to be fair to that in individual if this is so. But word on the ground is that that house was actually bought and placed there as a safe house so that terrorists could get to stay there and have a safe haven whenever they wanted to cool out after getting hot. No, but this, the thing is that men from other communities found it easy to go to St. James and just cool out. Even Prekeboy. Prekeboy was also one of the stone crushers. Mean, as a matter of fact, he was once the, the leader. But after Prekeboy died, was shot and killed by the security forces after about seven years of reign of terror. He was killed. And the the um the Stone Crusher gang sort of disintegrated because it needed a leader and everybody who tried to rise they were cancelling out each other because everybody wanted to be leader. So people were, most of the terrorists were cancelling out each other. We know that there are no loyalties where these terrorists are concerned. Anyway, guess what? Inadvertently, one person rose to the top. A little water boy who was our little water boy in the camp. And this water boy was known as, them call him Six Boss. Now, Six Boss, he, when the gang became so weak that it couldn't find a leader and everybody wanted to be leader and they didn't know how to decide on one, he decided, he went in and he cancelled out the others and took over. But by the time he cancelled out, there was nobody left. So Stone Crusher went defunct. So what Six did, what he did now, was to just form a new gang, and he called, and he called the gang G City. So G City is a gang, and it is what rose from the ashes of the Stone Crusher gang. So the Stone Crusher, Crusher gang is not really dead; it just went, uh, it just metamorphosized into something else. Now, what we have to ask, the question, question we have to ask is, if the, the Horius Chang is the Minister of National Security, and all of these gangsters, because there is said to be 17 gangs in the constituency of Horius Chang, 17, and these, these are official figures. In other words, it could, could be more, it could be a bit less, but... Police have found that it's 17 gangs in that little 15 mile radius alone in one man's constituency. Ironically, the constituency of the Minister of National Security. Now, no matter what goes on or what they have tried, things have still spilled over into violence there. Now, it has been said, you know that most of these gangsters are, have become aligned to the Jamaica Labour Party. And why they have been aligned to it is because they have been got, getting certain um, nods from certain people 
within the constituency because it served their purpose. Now, if this is so, and Ori Strang has this going on in, in his constituency, and I've given either tacit or explicit approval for these gangs to continue. Where are we going as a country? How could he be in that position and be controlling both the gangs and controlling the Minister of National Security? But do you think that Andrew Holness don't know about the nefarious activity of Dr. Aureus Chang? He knows. Because I can tell you this. Andrew Holness knows everything that goes on in everybody's life in this country. He can know. And here is why. The Prime Minister have access to all the data on any citizen anywhere in the world that he wants to gather data on, within reasons. What he has to do is to simply ask for the data. The FBI, the CIA, MI6, KGB, Interpol, NSA, that's the National Security Agency in the United States, and all other agencies worldwide would tell him what to want to know and anybody. So if he didn't know what Horace Chang was up to, all he had to do was to simply take up his phone and call anybody anywhere on earth and get an answer. Simple as that. So, Andrew knows exactly what Horace Chang is up to. And to further this off, anybody know where um, Andrew Holness got the word, got the name Brogad? Does anybody know? Well, I'm going to tell you because a lot of people don't know. There's a, this, this six boss, as they call him, Squash, one of the greatest, the most bloodiest, homegrown terrorist that turn on and turn off bloodshed in Jamaica. He gave Andrew Holness that name. His name is Quash. If you look at the screen, you can see that evil piece of dung. There he is. That is Squash. And he gave Andrew the name. Now, why has Andrew hung up the name? If Andrew didn't want the name and seeing where it come from that it come from a man who is a farmer who, who is a terrorist known terrorist known by interpol and if he takes the name from that person and hug up the name now him friend yeah a dirty terrorist can give you a name and you hug it up and love it up and don't denounce it now denounce the person who gave it to you and don't tell me say you you didn't know this man antecedent and all the activities that comes with this man because you have been told if you also wanted to know about Horace Chang you could have known because you can know about anybody so tell me Andrew how you get the name Brogad and hug it up and you take the name from a terrorist and you have a national security minister who is the head of national security and also the head of a line of terrorist gangs who have them there in the community hugging them up and they are there till this blessed day and he can't even move them that no make no sense another thing to look at again why you can know that Horace Chang is very very tainted is that on the 6th of December 2022 the Honorable Prime Minister traveled with a delegation to the United States, to Washington, D.C., to discuss matters with um, United States officials. The main theme of this visit, and the main purpose of this visit, was to um, matters concerning national security. Now, they were there to discuss, um, among other things, money laundering, drug trafficking, gun running, gang violence, and of course, and to try to detect Jamaican gangsters who were hiding out in the United States and who were sending back guns and, and money and directing the violence from the United States. One of who was Squash. 
Yes, among others, but I'm doing a separate video with those guys, so I won't get too much into that. But here is a significant part of that visit on December 6th. I think the Prime Minister spent five or six days there. Among the guess, guess, go on, guess who was missing from that delegation? Remember that this is a delegation discussing national security. You know, who was conspicuously missing the National Security Minister, Dr. Horace Chang. He's missing from a meeting that has to do with his specific portfolio. What do you guys think? The U.S. government does not trust Horace Chang. And they know, say, mix up. They know, say, Andrew mix up too, you know. But here is what. They have to deal with Andrew Holness because he's the Prime Minister. No, they don't want to see Horace Chang. As a matter of fact, Horace Chang is on a list of five cabinet ministers who the United States want. But because they're in the cabinet, the U.S. government is giving them time, giving Andrew time to sort them out. It's five at least minimum, including Horace Chang, in the Jamaican cabinet, current administrative cabinet that the United States government want. And why do why would the U.S. want Dr. Horace Chang? Why they want him like how they want Dudus? Why is it that the um the that um the America don't even want to see him to discuss national security matters to do with his portfolio? Come on, think, think what it is. Think on those things. I'll make a separate video pertaining to um, all the gangs and the gang leaders that Horace Chang has under his control, and that will be coming up soon. So, thanks for watching. Like, share, and um, leave a comment below. And I'll see you in my next video.